hello everyone I'm Kendrick Thomas and this is Dan McGuire we're both uh, engineers from Jones and DeMille engineering and recently had the privilege of working with Beaver County School District um, evaluating some of their buildings and uh, we recently met with the school board on two of the buildings that are of concern to us they're the the two high school gymnasiums that the school district owns. One is at Beaver High School and the other is at Milford High School. As you can see in these pictures, the gym's walls and roof are made entirely of concrete. Some of the concerns that we found and that the school district wanted us to share in this video with you is, is regard to a significant structural item that's, that's missing from these buildings, as was common in the construction of the 1970s for tilt-up concrete structures. There's uh, there's a key element that's missing that's called the diaphragm and so we wanted to demonstrate to you why um, that's important we've, we've made some models right here to give a de demonstration and uh, with that I'll turn it over to Dan to to do the demonstration we have here for you oh thanks Kendra. so the element that's missing from these buildings is called a diaphragm uh, the diaphragm is what ties the building together so that under an earthquake or wind loads which push from the side the building can act as a whole as you see on this building the diaphragm would be this yellow part on the top the yellow piece of paper that ties this together makes it so that if i push on the building from the side or from this side or from this side the building is able to hold itself together it's not going to fall over um, unfortunately in the 1970s like kendrick was talking about these concrete type structures didn't have diaphragms put on them. Typically what would happen nowadays when we build one of these is we pour a concrete slab on top of the building, which would tie it all together and, and provide that diaphragm. Um, if we look at this model over here, this is a very rough representation of what the current gymnasiums are built like. If you can see on the roof, we have a bunch of separate panels, each one not really tied to the other one except for some little pieces of tape. These tape, these pieces of tape represent steel plates that were welded together for those beams. Um, as you can see, the walls also aren't really connected very well, so they're kind of allowed to move on their own. Unfortunately, with this construction, as we can see, if I turn the building this way and push on it, it flexes, it bends. I'll turn it this way and you can see how those kind of pop out. And what would realistically happen in an earthquake is a load would start to push and these little pieces of tape, the little steel connectors on top, would actually probably fail. So we can take a knife here and cut those. And if we cut those pieces of tape, you can see quite quickly our building no longer stands. Um, these pieces don't act together and so they can stand up and you can even push on top of them a little bit, but as soon as you push them to the side, they fall over. So that kind of demonstrates the risk that we've seen with these buildings and, and why we're concerned. Um, what we've recommended to the school board they do is they fix them. Uh, there's a carbon fiber fabric we can use with an epoxy that will essentially seal these pieces together. It'll act like a big long strip of tape that will run between each piece. And you can see as I tape up these pieces of paper for our model, almost instantly the building now stays together so just by providing those little strips of tape i can push on our building now and it's not going to fall over it's going to act much better it's going to act like this one with a solid roof so that's what we recommended is that there be some sort of retrofit some sort of fix provided for these buildings so that in the event of an earthquake or a large wind event they'll they'll stand up Okay. Well, thank you. It's been a privilege to, to share this information with you. We hope you find it useful and helpful and, and help you understand the, the risks and the issues associated with those two gymnasiums in the Beaver County School District. Thanks.